point of view. From one controversy to another, mm -hmm. it's the live studio, so you've got to hear the uh, voice of some analysts talking about issues. All right, so from one controversy to the other, U.S. President Donald Trump has been raided with accusations and counter accusations, but still the man is like proving to himself and to the world that he is one of the best or one of the greatest American presidents that ever has been in existence. And now the latest allegation of trouble rocking him right now is uh, this is not the first time. The race is wrong this time around. He went to the house to finger four women after something happened. He went on his Twitter page and started tweeting. And from what they saw, they are saying that Trump is a racist. What others are saying, is he really saying the truth? What the third parties are saying, hmm, is a huge distraction. Trump, in the murky waters of allegations and counter allegations. What do you think will be the impact in the U.S. polity? Is it going to hit up the polity or will the polity correct itself? Is it going to simmer off or is it going to build up to a measure that may just go beyond control in the U.S.? Has risen come to stay in the U.S.? Or is it going to affect the migration law? Is it going to affect so many things, economy, politics, you just name it in the U.S.? Well, everything now be based on country, color, race, or creed. All these are more we we'll take a look at on the discussion segment of International Forum. With me here in the studio, I have uh, Williams Wifel, a political analyst, and of course uh, a, a right activist, but local and international politics is very grounded. Williams, welcome to the show. Thank I appreciate you your coming. Thank you. All right. Now, sitting very close to him is a legal practitioner and analyst per se. Yes, but local and international politics is well grounded. Join me to welcome Barrister Henry Wazo. Barrister Henry, welcome to the show. You ask, you ask me. All right. Barrister, here we are. Donald Trump is at it again. And tongues, they've been wagging about what he said. Uh, about four Congress women in the U.S. And from what he said, after the controversy, he said women should apologize to the U.S., apologize to Israel, apologize to him. Despite those comments he tweeted, women, of course, they reacted on the world. They've been talking about this racist row with U.S. President Donald Trump. How do you feel about this latest indictment, so to speak, on the President Trump? Well, uh, you ask, uh, to me, the man has always remained himself. The man has never changed. And if you look at his argument, too, he said he never referred to anybody in particular. That was what he said. He didn't, he didn't mention their names as it were. But <clears throat> because of the statements they, too, have been making, especially uh, Tilab from the Pakistan, the Lady Omar from Mogadishu, that is from, you know, <clears throat> from their statement. So they now feel that directly that that statement he has made actually is, uh, you know, towards their persons, as it were. Though some persons are saying that he shouldn't have done that. But the question still remains, has he said anything that is different from what you find in the part of the world where this book came from? He has not said anything different. Is it the lady from Mogadishu or is it the other lady from Palestine? They all have their challenges as it were. So the uh, man, Donald Trump, has not said anything new, but the only thing is that he continued to reemphasize and re-echo on the fact that this part of the world, as it were, they should do things the right way. Others in the civilized world do their things. And these ladies who are in the Congress, as it were, these ladies who are in the Congress also have made comments which Donald Trump on his own, because Donald Trump is a man who feels that America should be respected. He believes that America is all and all. He believes that America is the beginning of the world and the end of the world. So anybody saying anything about America should be able to say something positive, should be able to say something great about America. And that was his statement. He said that his duty is to ensure that America remains great, that nothing brings him down. 
So that is the position. So are, are you in support of his position about what he said uh, well, about his to some, to some, uh, Yeah, to some extent, I am in support of his position because no man will be in, uh, in the position of authority whose it is his primary responsibility to ensure that his nation is protected and will do otherwise. Wow. Interesting. Williams, do you mm -hmm. differ? I, I differ largely. Um, you know, the, the person of President Trump, uh, the world has uh, seen him unfold. And um, time after time, we've seen that this man has proven himself to be a racist. Um, he believes that he is the, the president of a, a group of people. And, you know, the language he used, whether or not he mentioned these women by name, because it is their civic responsibility to hold the office of the President of the United States to its highest standard as people in Congress, be, be them women of color, white women, uh, irrespective of their religion. They have it as part of their responsibility to hold him to the highest standard. And the person in the White House doesn't believe in being held to the highest standards. He believes that uh, whatever he says is correct. He believes that um, however he says it, people should accept it. And when you don't, you become an enemy of America. He sees himself as this all-American guy. But, you know, sadly, this is someone who doesn't respect American institutions. When you talk about America in the world today, America is respected for its institutions. The fact that it's not a one-man show the fact that people can challenge the president of the United States. When Obama was there, when Obama is speaking sometimes in a rally or sometimes in a town hall setting, people heckle him, people hush him, people sometimes even insult him. And many a times they will say, okay, wait, let's, let's hear what he has to uh, say. All right, no, no, you, you just want to pity, please, just, just praise it. Let's get to read what Donald Trump tweeted. Now, let's, let's read it gradually. And from what he said, he said, it is so interesting. Okay, now when it goes back again to it, I'm going to read out what he tweeted for you to really appreciate this discourse because he has tweeted already mm. and people are like reacting. No, to, 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 yeah. to even paraphrase, he said, he said, look, this Congress, uh, Democratic Congress women, they've been, they've been ranting so much and that so yeah, interesting. interesting to see progressive Democrats, Congress women who originally come from countries whose governments are a complete and total <laughs> catastrophe, the worst, no. most corrupt and no. inept no. in anywhere no. in the world, if no. even they have a functioning <laughs> government. government. <laughs> and and that they, uh, why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime infested places from which they came? No. Then come back and show no. us how it is done. No. No. Yes. <laughs> so 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 no. much. So no. so now to, say, that is this now, 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 to, now to my point, uh, yeah. America is a melting pot. America is not a country for whites. America is not a country for blacks. And if there are even people who should feel entitled in America, yeah. the black Americans should feel more entitled because they built America without a dime. They, they were taken from Africa forcefully and then they built America. The White House was built by slaves. So if, if, if anyone should feel entitled and has been cheated all along, is the African, is these people of color. So what he has been entitled all his life. He inherited a, a huge fortune from his, from his parents. And ever since then, he has talked down on people. So this has become his style. This is who he is. In fact, when the Central Park Five were arrested, these kids were just 15, 14 year olds. But because they were African-Americans, four of them were African-Americans, and one of them was Latino, they were not white. Oh, they must have been guilty. Donald Trump sponsored a center page ad that those guys should be sentenced to death. Even before they were being judged, Donald Trump already sentenced them by his own imagination being a racist. Because what is racism? Racism is believing that a certain race, by just the way they look, are, are capable of doing certain things. Oh and it confers superiority to a particular race. So by virtue of them being black, they must have been guilty. Those guys were already jailed years after it was discovered from DNA analysis that those guys were not the culprits. 
and then they sued the federal government and got some compensation. But then, that doesn't stop what Donald Trump has done, or that doesn't undo what he has done, by taking a page in a daily. This was a matter that was still being litigated. He went out there to say those guys should be sentenced to death. So it's not today he started it. Even his, his Trump organization has been sued by the federal government, then he was just a, a citizen, for, for housing discrimination against people of color. Because he says it openly that blacks are lazy, that uh, uh, Jews are good with handling money, and that uh, 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 the Italians are good with their hands. Yeah. So he's a racist. He, he predetermines who you are before he meets you. All right, now just you by saying down. your color. Just by saying your color. Now, would you want to cotton to what he just said about Donald Trump being a racist, drawing inferences from what you just saw via his tweet? Uh, well, to some extent, I will say that he is a racist. And again, you look at it from the other angle to that. He has not said anything that is new to me. Because if these persons who are complaining that America, what he has been doing in the White House, that he has uh, done so much to the, uh, that has affected those of them who migrated from any part of the world down to America, if they feel that he has done all that all to them, what he is trying to say is that they too came from parts of the world where they are, Governments have not done anything better than what he is doing. That is his own position. That is the argument. That if you say, I have not done well, or what I am doing does not work out the way it should have been done in a, small, in a civilized society, what now happens from where the part of the world people came from? Have they done anything better than what I have done? He did not told them, okay, you go back home to your place. See, look at how it is done, and come back and, and show us we are the Americans. To some extent, the man is a racist. But another thing there is that the man is being factual. That is the way I look at it. So, so when you say, the man when, is you say factual. when you say when you say people should go back to where they come from, this is this is what is, is being known amongst the white nationalists. But don't and forget, racist. hold on, hold on, now, Williams. Don't forget the genesis of all this. They, they, they keep on the hitting you know, about Trump. Yes, yes, yes. 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 My God, if, you, if you don't if you don't want <laughs> any form of criticism, they don't go into politics. Yeah. The minute you venture into politics, you should expect what comes with the terrain. And it comes with a lot of hard scrutiny. And it comes with a lot of opposition. It happens even here in Nigeria. People oppose you they, because opposition brings out the best in you. For, for, for two years since he has been president, he has not held a White House correspondent dinner because he believes that the press is against him. Meanwhile, Fox News lambasted Obama every day. Every day. Sometimes, in, re in reference to Obama, they'll say, uh, Osama, sorry, Obama. They know what they are, just to humiliate him. This was the same man, before he became president, he doubted if Obama was born in the U.S. Exactly. He said so. The betterism uh, uh, movement. Okay. He, said, he said they should go and check Obama's birth certificate and ensure that this man was really born in the U.S. And that if it comes out that he wasn't really born in the U.S., he may go down as the greatest con job ever perpetrated by any individual. Obama had to publish his birth certificate on the internet for the whole world to see, just to prove to this man who kept on lambasting. So if you don't want to be lambasted, then stay out of the White House. You can as well resign, because that is the duty of every American citizen to put their president in check to make sure they get the best governance. So if the, the, the way he's behaving now, if that's the way previous American presidents behave, America wouldn't be this great. Okay, now they've been clamoring for his tax returns. He has still not released his tax returns still today. And you are the one who claims to love America so much. Meanwhile, those that never said they loved America, they made sure, out of moral obligation, they published their tax returns so Americans know where their money is coming from. They know your, 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 your source of income, show, it, re, it reflects in your tax returns. Uh, publish it, let us see. And let's know if you really have ties with Russia. In, in fact, Russian collusion would have been put to, to rest a long time ago if Donald Trump had just published his tax returns. But he wouldn't. You attack the CIA, you attack the FBI, you attack Congress women. You are the only one who knows everything in the whole world. No other American can be as smart as you. You know more than the generals who have been to war. This was the same man who dodged drafting five times. 
He pretended to have entered the, the, the academy. Okay, now let's draft people to war. He would go and get some sort of certificate, uh, 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 medical record that states that he cannot go for certain reasons. Uh, on one of those occasions, he said he had bone spurs. He made up everything just to make sure he didn't go to war. Then you started attacking a prisoner of war in the person of late Senator McCain. These are people who actually have the entitlement to say that, yes, we love America. All right. But this man doesn't, he has never sacrificed anything for the US, but he claims to be the one who loves the US the most. And he's now telling people to go back to where they came from. Where are they from? Three of them were born in the US. Only one of them came from, from Somalia, Ilhan Il Omar, and then she was naturalized in, 20, in 2015. And whether you be you naturalized or born in the U.S., you all have equal rights by virtue of the Constitution. Okay, now, talking about the Constitution, for what Donald Trump really uh, lashed out, so to speak, on these women, though he said he wasn't targeting anyone. Uh, he said that. He but anyone can infer where he is really throwing the bullet at. The Do you form. think that this will increase racism in America if the president seems to be at the forefront of all this? Yes, to some extent, it will increase it because, uh, just like uh, Omar said, he said he's uh, stoking white nationalism. That that is what Donald Trump is doing. So, to some extent, it will increase it. It will uh, increase the agitation for those of them who are not uh, white, as, uh, as they say, not having voice to do certain things they would have done in America as American citizens. Certain persons will now begin to see them from the angle that though you have American uh, citizenship, but you are not an American. That is the angle people will now begin to see them from. And this will go a long way, creating more acrimony between those who are white and those who are black in nature. Mm -hmm. So I see to an extent that it will increase the racism if the tension continues the way it is going. Because the Donald Trump himself, as it were, is not ready to give in. Though he has argued that he was not referring to them, but implicitly we know that he was talking about these four congressmen who are in there. And you also listen to the, uh, the statement made by uh, the, uh, the House Speaker in respect of, uh, you know, he said that uh, Donald Trump is talking about making America great. But from all in inclusion, he's trying to make America great for the, white, the whites. Hmm. That is what the House Speaker said. So do you uh, see and, and, and another race he didn't, war yes, coming up in America? He, he didn't start today. In mm -hmm. fact, this is a man who launched his uh, first presidential bid on racism. I can remember uh, you know, watching him at the Trump Towers as he descended down the elevator and he came and said, uh, when Mexico are sending people as if as though it's their government that sends them, they are not sending their best. They are sending thugs, they are sending rapists, they are sending drugs, you know? And sadly, some of these things that he touts, you can even go and verify. There's not much truth to them. Recently, I was seeing on TV a, a, a drug bust where it was actually a plane that was carrying $2 billion worth of drugs that, that, we, that was busted. And it was discovered that this plane actually flew into America. So when he says, oh, drugs are pouring in through the border, it's just to label some people bad. That's not to say illegal migration is good. But then again, it is the right of every human in this world to emigrate. Yes, if there actually is a, a, a war in, in a place where you come from, you can actually go to someone's border and seek asylum. But what this man has been trying to do is to even make these asylum seekers pay money. And then you yank children from their mothers, you throw them in cages. And then these women have been saying, no, look, sir. No, 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 no. no yes, 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 yes. Well, the from, videos the are there. there. The videos are in cages. The videos are there no, for uh, the world no, to no. see. What it is there. Mm -hmm. And these women are complaining of the inhumane condition mm -hmm. these children are subjected to. That this is un American. This is not who we are known for. You take you separate families and you are a Republican. You are supposed to be from a party that is pro-family. You are supposed to be from a family that believes that children should be with their mothers, but then you separate them for weeks. And so many of these children are tormented, they are depressed. You should see some of the drawings these children, these children have been making in those cages. 
And then these women are saying, look, these cages are not neat. The lights are kept on throughout the night. In fact, it looks like a place meant to torture them so that when next others are coming here, they should know that America is not a place where you can just cross right. and then seek asylum. Okay, you just hold on now. Taking it up from uh, the cages allegation he talked about, the Trump wouldn't allude to that, that it puts people in cages. Uh, well, you see, the truth still remains that because even the, uh, the congressmen, they raised the issue on that, you know, those who of them who are crossing from Mexico, that they were kept in a particular place, a kind of uh, uh, a kind of cell that they were kept. So uh, implicitly, it might be in form of cage, but one cannot actually say because the truth still remains that those who is their responsibility to ensure that those who are migrating from the borders mm -hmm. that they are kept within a particular place to ensure their safety or to ensure that at the end of the day they will be you know uh, you know uh, they will do the needful to enable them actually uh, get the asylum which they were seeking but i know of a truth that because of the stand of the president as it were those of them who is their primary responsibility to ensure that things are done the way they are supposed to know, will do it the other way around so in the issue of the cages though i had, i cannot categorically say that they were cages but I know from the complaints that were raised by the women in the Congress is that those places where these people are kept is not fit for human beings. Hmm. It's not fit for human beings. Go back to your country, teach them, and you come tell us how and, uh, it's been done. Yeah. Now, you now hold on. Now, in the house, when this controversy was raging, it's like many of the Republicans, they are quiet about this. Majority of Democrats, they're like, you know, uh, bent in their anger at this particular statement as it turned into a party thing. Yeah, it definitely. Uh, politics will always uh, uh, come into play, even when serious issues are being discussed. Mm -hmm. But it's so sad, like I said before, the Republican Party is supposed to be a, a, a party that believes in uh, um, family virtues. A party that believes that okay a man and a wife should get married and have children pro-life but sadly over the years we've, we've seen a, a an evolution of the republican party you know a party that believes in christian values you have christian values yet someone so a, 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 an immigrant dies at your border with his kid and there's no outrage there's no there's no there's no empathy from this same party that is supposed to be a Christian party. A man, a man is uh, ranting or, or, or spewing racist rants at four women. And one would expect that the least thing any Republican who had an iota of spine would do is denounce Donald Trump and the racism he's peddling. But no, they won't. Uh, so far, I think it's only one it's only or one. two Republicans. No, two now. Two, two now. Two. Out of the entire Republican Party, apart from Paul Ryan, who is no longer the Speaker of the House, at least then when he was Speaker, Paul Ryan spoke out against uh, uh, such racism when uh, a case that involved Donald Trump was, was being judged by a judge of Mexican heritage. And this is a man who was born in the United States. And Donald Trump in an interview said, he said that he doesn't believe this man will be fair. Why, sir? Because the man is of Mexican mm. heritage. Mm. So, so and, and then Speaker Paul Ryan said this was the textbook definition of racism. Where you don't want to believe in someone's capacity, someone's capabilities. You just look at their race and then you can determine what you think they should do. So, that, so this has always been there. And the, the, the Republican Party has grown spineless over the years. Now they don't, they don't condemn the president because... People have always said it, that the Republican Party is a party of racists. They believe in white supremacy. They believe in white nationalism. You should go to chat rooms. I've seen snapshots of chat rooms where they talk. This, this same thing that he's saying now is what those guys say there. Go back to your country. When, uh, when a, a black or brown person comments, go back to your country. If you don't like the way we are running this place, go back. We don't want you here. Why are you even here? He said it the other time, that why are people not coming from Norway? I mean, no way Norwegians should be here. Why are they sending people from S whole countries, referring to African countries as S whole countries? I mean, he's not the first president the United States has had. Even other presidents before him, other Republicans before him, will use dog whistles. That there are things that people say. 
that resonates with their race. People of their race know that, oh, this guy is referring to African Americans. He says his own openly. He doesn't care. All right. Now, from what he said, Republicans, they have become spineless to challenge Donald Trump. Is that what is really happening? Are they placing party affiliation to securing or safeguarding the polity in America? Uh, to some extent, they are doing that. Initially, it was just one person, but one other person has equally raised his voice. But the truth still remains that as a party, they will not want to do it. It's, it's a common thing everywhere in the world. It's a member of your party, either in terms of leadership or whatever. You want to protect the interest of your party, notwithstanding what the person is doing, even if it is to the benefit of the people as it were. So the party on their own part is ensuring that whatever thing he says, though some persons are not happy with it, but they cannot come out openly, apart from one or two persons who have done that, to you know, re-emphasize and re-echo on the fact that it has been his style because he, you know, because of that racist you know statements which he usually makes. So, but I know that the party, as it were, will not go the other way around because the election is not far from now. Hmm. Now talking Speaking about the election, now talking yeah. about the election with all oh. this happening right now, is it going to affect the outcome of the election? Speaking because about because it's going for the second term in office. Yes. Speaking yeah. about yeah. election, he has been conscious of his second term right from when his presidency began, uh, January 20, 2017. Hmm. He even started another tour. He started his re-election tour just as he resumed office. You know, he's an unconventional person that we agree with, but. You know, the fact that he, he does these things without any recourse to what really makes America great. You know, he, he, he came out then, you know, started his racist runs against Mexicans, against Africans, you know, and now again, having launched his re-election bid, he has started with his racism again because that seems to be what, re what unites the Republican Party. Nothing unites them more than go back to where you come from. Nothing unites them more than we are better than these people. Nothing unites them more than, oh, we have a figure somewhere in the White House. Let's not forget um, Charlottesville. When white nationalists came out in Virginia and they were chanting rac racist laws at Jews, saying that Jews will not replace them. And when the president was asked to comment, he said there were fine people on both sides. For the side of those who were counter protesters, and the side of those who are saying Jews cannot replace them, Negroes should go back to Africa. He was saying that there were fine people on both sides. And let's not forget that someone drove his car from the angle of those that were protesting. These white nationalists drove his car right into where the anti-protesters were and killed a lady. But Donald Trump didn't raise any alarm about that. He felt there were fine people on both sides. And now talking about the election that is coming, the Republican Party has been a party that has peddled racism for so long. For the last uh, Congress election they had, one of the women that was um, gunning for office, he, he, she, she had this um, uh, 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 a man, someone in his district, that was going to donate money. And the man said, look, uh, if it, if it, um, even if it's uh, a, a, a party, or rather a, a public hanging of a Negro, that he will gladly donate his money. And then this woman, instead of denouncing him, laughed about it and later said it was a joke. So to them, the other races don't matter. The only race that matters is the white race, as long as the white race remains superior. And then there are statistics coming out now that by 2045, the white race will cease to be the majority race in America. And then there is, according to polls, the African Americans are giving bet more, the Latinos are giving bet yeah. more. So there is this scare that someday they will lose their majority yeah. edge. And that is what Donald Trump is fighting for. So when he says these things, they are the, the average, I'm not saying it's all white America, the average white American sees it as, oh, he seems to be championing our cause. So all that's right. why he says these things. All right. Oh, now, 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 talking about the election, is there going to be a sway? Uh, not really, because he even made a, com he made a comment. He said that uh, the Democrats, they should wait for 2020. They look at what will happen in 2020. Because himself know quite well that what the whites want to hear is what he is telling them. Because that is the message. The, what he wants to, he want to make them understand that they are superior. He wants to make them understand that he wants to make America great again. Great, not only great for uh, the, the whites, but great as a nation. And, but the white 
will always dominate. The white will always take their position as those who are seen to be superior to the blacks. So that is the, so I know by, by the time the election comes in 2020, as it were, I know definitely that is where he's telling it to us. I don't see a, any change coming. No, uh, all right, right now, from what you're saying, it's already a go-go for Donald uh, Trump. No, but it's, it will be a go-go for him. But to, that is from my own point of view. I'm looking at it from my own point of view. Mm. Because I am seeing from that angle that the whites will always want him to remain in office. Mm. Because he will always protect their own interests. He has already raised the issue. He said he wants to make America great. For those who are not interested, for those who are not comfortable with you, she will leave America. And someone like saying that he wants to make America white again, is that what it's all about? Uh, that, that, that was the issue uh, uh, ah, uh, uh, that, uh, so that, uh, that yeah. you know, uh, race, that he wants to make America white again. That was the... Uh, but it's not possible because as it were today, we know of a truth that the, uh, the blacks are almost trying to outnumber the whites that are in America. Uh -huh. And day in day out, people are migrating from every part of the world. Even Nigeria here, yeah. people are migrating every day for all parts of the world, ensuring that they get a visa to America. And once they get there, they are not coming back home. And those of them who have remained there, recently a Nigerian, uh, you, know, uh, you know, had an opportunity of becoming a member of the house somewhere. Uh, because of the long time, something no more now, because of the long time, okay, that is England. Because of the long time, you know, they have been there. So there's no way at the end of the day, Donald Trump, from my own point of view, will not have his way as it were. Wow, quite interesting. Now, before we talk about more into the American politics that will be coming up in 2020, take a look at Donald Trump's statement. Are they not facts? That, that it should go back to crime infested. No, talking about the countries these persons originated from their origin. He talked about the as whole the other time. Mm. And we talked about total catastrophe, mm. corruption, bad governance. Mm. Is he not correct? He, he's, he's so wrong. He's so wrong. He's How wrong. Is he wrong? He's, he is wrong in the sense that he is the leader of America. These four women carry American passports. They don't carry Somali passports. They don't carry Palestinian passports. They carry American passports. Mm -hmm. Three of them were born in the United States, just like he was born in the United States. His um, uh, forefathers are from Germany. He is proud of his German heritage. Who has ever challenged him for being so proud of his German heritage? He says it all the time, that Germans are strong, that he knows that he's German, and, and that's the reason why he's strong. And who has ever said he should go back to Germany? So he has, he, this doesn't even come into the context of who should go back. If, if they were not American citizens, let's say Nigerian immigrants who are there, and if they're even there legally, you don't even still have that right to say they should leave. Because they have the right. If they have a work permit, valid visas, then they should stay. If they are permanent residents, then they should stay. America is not his property. He is the president. He is just first amongst equals. He is not the owner of America. And that's what these women were trying to tell him. Look, we are all Americans. And we have that civil responsibility to hold you to the highest standards, to tell you that, look, what you are doing is un-American. The world doesn't know us for this. Look, you should do this and this to correct this issue. We should come up with the right immigration plan to make sure that, yes, uh, uh, people crossing the border is stemmed. But he's saying that, look, uh, if you think you don't like the way I'm treating these people, because he feels they are sentimental towards their cause, given that they too came from somewhere far, they can now go back. But Germany is also far away. He can also resign and go back to Germany. Someone should tell him that too. But Germany is very well. Yes, okay, so let him resign and go, and go to Germany. <laughs> Since Germany is very okay. <laughs> Germany is very and that well. they should go back and fix the crime in first. No, they're Americans. They have a blue passport just as he does. Mm. And they should remain there and fight like uh, um, Alexandra Ocasio Cortez was saying. When you love something, you don't leave it, you don't abandon it. And she was saying of how her father took her to Washington, D.C., when she was still a little girl and then made her look at most of the monuments there in Washington, D.C., and told her, look, this is who we are. This is for us. It's not just mine. It's not just, it's, it's ours. So she grew up having that mentality that, look, 
America is for everybody. And she was born in Bronx. So she was even saying sarcastically that, look, if he wants me to return back to oh, my well, country, she will return back. Exactly. <laughs> no, she's even from uh, Bronx. Yes, I I she from, from, from Puerto Rico. But, yeah. she, but she was born in Bronx. Yeah, in Bronx. Yeah. That her, she can go back to her country in Bronx. And where is Bronx? Bronx is in New York, United States. So he, some of the things he says, look, the man is actually a smart guy. He knows what he's doing. These are all dog whistles. He, he knows the whistle he's blowing. <laughs> no, exactly. He knows those he's calling to the table. He's trying to rally the white nationalists. He's trying to let them know that, look, this country is still yours. Okay. Look, this country, these guys, you can actually still tell them to go back if they don't like the way we are governing this place. The only persons who have that right to tell anybody, go back to where you came from, are the native Indians. Okay. Okay. They are no, the no. ones who own the country. All they right. can actually, actually tell the Europeans to go back. Okay, now, 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 you, are, you just hold on now, talking about going back, going back to your country, fix it and tell us how you did it. These four women came up to say, look, these are all distractions. Let's not take our gaze from the immigration quality or politics of Donald Trump. Do you want to pitch your tent with them? Because they came out to address a press conference saying he is distracting us from the issue on the ground. If it's a distraction, what kind of a distraction is it causing? Uh, well, uh, to some extent, it's a distraction. It's a distraction yeah. in the sense that that which they have been, you know, orchestrating over the issue of his uh, immigration uh, uh, law, to some extent, there is a distraction. Distraction in the sense that now that uh, Donald Trump is raising issues, others will see it from a different point of view. They will no longer look at it from the angle. Though they have a genuine cause, which they are fighting, as it were. But on the other hand, the, that cause they are fighting, Donald Trump also believes that the statement they are making, because he, he made statement that they should apologize to him, apologize to America, and apologize to Israel. Because he believes that the statement which these ladies are equally making, to some extent, affects, on the other hand, offends, you know, uh, that a collective will of the Americans, or for those who say, I'm an American, you cannot say this about America. So Donald Trump sees it from that angle that they, from the statement they are making too, that they are making a statement that is derogatory to anybody who claims or thinks that he's a true American. Mm -hmm. So to some extent, I see it from that angle. But from the other angle, as it were too, he has his point, just as it is. Just as they have their own point, he equally has his own point. But the issue that they, that idea of go back to your place, uh, you know, and come back and tell us how it is done, he knows quite well that there's no way these ladies are going back home. Because where they are coming from is far from where they are already. They, are, they, they cannot go back. Even if, though, uh, according to uh, the other lady said, she has been a uh, championing cause, you know, that, you know, affects people in her own uh, part of the world. It is in, in Africa here, as it were, that she has been, you know, maybe a kind of uh, humanitarian, uh, uh, you know, activities to ensure that these people are well taken care of. But that is not even enough because they don't, don't have the capacity to go into the government of their countries to ensure that things are done the way they are supposed to be. They are not into the politics of their borders on their own parts of the world where they came from. So there's no way they can come back home. The only thing they can do is just once in a while, just as you find in some other people who come from diaspora, they will come to see how they can assist another in terms of health, care as uh, delivery, or they will come and, you know, assist maybe in terms of beauty school or building a health center or carrying persons from America to come to their parts of the world to ensure that uh, health uh, care services are given free to their people. That is the only extent at which these persons can go. They cannot do more than that. They cannot determine the kind of government their country will, you know, will run. It's not possible. They cannot determine who takes over government. Even if they come to their, the, where they, they, uh, their own countries where their parents, you know, uh, migrated from, nobody will even listen to them as it were. Because the people who want uh, believe that these people are white people. That is the, their mindset. They came from overseas. They come to come and determine for us what we should do here. It's not possible. So I see from angle that that statement from Donald Trump, as it were, is not that they should go, as it were. But he used a, a kind of way to taunt them, too, because of the statements they were making about America, the statement they were making about himself and his uh, policies. So that is the angle at which I look at it from.
about to you L destruction yes it's a it's a, it's a destruction it's a, like i said before it's it's meant to rally a group of persons mm -hmm. so they have their their code languages and when he says those things the, i'm sure the kkk they, they must have been very proud um, it took him a long time when he was running for the first time he was running for office to disavow the kkk grand wizard you know um, uh, the person of duke because the man, the man said Donald Trump stood for their ideology and um, he, he's their guy. So he said it openly. And then a lot of, there were calls from so many quarters for him to disavow them. It took him weeks. And then when he was going to do it, he even did, like, OK, I disavowed every duke. You know, he did it in such a way that they would know that he just had to do it. I mean, it's not his fault. You know, this is politics. I just had to do it. I'm still your guy. So he knows what he's doing. It's a mere distraction. Uh, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, uh, Ayanna Presley in her own man. Um, Rashida. Uh, ta ta Rashida, Rashida yes, Rashida. Rashida. They've, yeah. all, they've all been to these uh, uh, detention uh, uh, centers, and they, they've seen that, look, what our country doesn't stand for is what is being meted out on these kids. These kids are too small to, to go through this ordeal. In the long run, they are going to, they're going to have a lot of psychological depression and that, look, we can do better as a nation. And that's what Donald Trump now, now connotes to be disrespect to America. But you will not respect the rights of these children, which is supposed to be American, by the way. I mean, the Statue of Liberty was given to America by France because of their stance on, on, on liberty, on liberating humans. People are, are in Guatemala. People are in El Salvador. They are being threatened. Some are being killed. Some have their husbands killed already. And then they run to your border. What a sane society does. Even any other country, not just America that touts itself as uh, the mercy country of the world. You know, the country that has mercy on people. So it is supposed to be their duty to get asylum for these people. But now he's saying that they should pay for asylum in a way to deter them from coming to their borders as immigrants. Wow. Quite interesting. Now, where does the Red Indian stand in all this? The owners <laughs> of the land. It seems to be so quiet. We just can't hear anything from yeah, them. They have been complaining about German. their cultural heritage and the rest of them. Mm. Barrister. Uh, well, uh, it's, it's, it's just like uh, what you... Uh, I can liken it to what happened in uh, Nigeria in, uh, in Lord Quara. Mm. Originally, they were Yorubas. Mm. But what happened? These Fulanis came from where they came from. Today you have a MI of uh, a lorry, mm. as it were. A lorry no longer is a, a Yoruba speaking. Mm. So the same thing with this uh, India. These people have come, they have dominated them. There's nothing they can do. Mm. Uh, even their uh, ways, uh, their lifestyle, their culture, as it were, all has been eroded. eroded. Completely. So what they now do is that uh, you hardly hear of these the, Indians. Do you hear anything about them? Except on. Um, Few occasions you see them, you know, uh, try to raise one issue or the other. But these persons who have migrated from different parts of the world came to America, they have taken over completely. So, and I know of it too, there is nothing they can do ahead uh, because, in terms of the economy, they have long overtaken them. In terms of political, uh, they have long overtaken them. Everything that has to be. So, they have the educationally and otherwise. So, these migrants have taken position. Hmm. So, at the end of the day, where are they? So they are just at the, at, the, at the position where they have found themselves long before now. That is where they remain up to now. Wow. Quite interesting. Well, it's time to call it a wrap on this show because our time is up. What advice do you have for these four women? And of course, other Trump and American society in general. Within 30 seconds, summarize. They must, they must never let up on Donald Trump. They must keep holding him to the highest standard that is expected of the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. um, the President himself must understand that he is no longer Citizen Trump, he is now President Trump, a President for all America, both naturalized, both the ones that were born there. They all belong to America, they are all American citizens, they should stay there and criticize him if necessary and he should embrace opposition right. because opposition is what actually makes any democracy healthy thank you so so much williams wife of barrister henry was well to me the women shouldn't give up they will continue to ask that things be done right by donald trump 
And again, I want to use it as an opportunity to tell all those African countries and some other countries in the world, try and make your nation a better place for your people. Yeah. Once your nation sure. is a better place for your people, yes. nobody will migrate. Yes. If, you if you make your country, uh, the resources are well managed and utilized by the in people, nobody will want to leave their place to any part of the world. All right, you've heard both of them. You have to work on your country, make your country great again. Just like Donald Trump is making America great again. So I'm saying it's right again. Depends on your opinion, not my views right now. But no matter what you do, make your country great again. Gentlemen, thank you so, so much for coming on today's show. I thank appreciate you your much. wonderful mm -hmm. analysis. And of course, happy birthday to Pastor Mrs. Odo Balo. We turn plus one today. May God richly bless you. We'll do it again next week, Tuesday. God willing, bye for now.